So you might have noticed that uh, I don't have the amazing sound I typically do, and uh, perhaps my backdrop's different, and that's because my interface is dead. So I'm gonna try to repair it. Uh, I have no idea how this is gonna go. Uh, it's an RME UFX, so it looks like this. It's actually pretty fancy looking in the front, right? But I have this weird thing going on where all the inputs, the lights are all green and flickering, and there's like really bad noises coming out of all the preamps. And from my best guess is, uh, it's probably the power supply, but I have no idea. So we're going to change all the capacitors out on this power supply unit inside this. And I figured why not document this just in case someone else out there has a similar problem. You don't have to be scared of it. I'm not an electrician by any means, but we're gonna try to fix it anyways. I have a little bit of soldering skills, like I can solder a cable together. Basically all the tools I'll be using today are this uh, helping hands thing I think I got for free at Harbor Freight. I have a solder sucker. These are super cheap. It just helps to uh, pull out any of the solder because um, we're gonna have to take the solder away from the capacitors on this board. And then I have my little, actually, this is actually pretty awesome. This is a soldering station. And I'll put a link to all this crap in uh, the description if I ever upload this, if I ever get this working. And this is my wife's puzzle, actually. I'm not really that good at uh, putting together puzzles, so I'm not invited. And if you notice, I have some cardboard that uh, came from a box of some breakfast biscuit things that I eat. And that's all you need to fix an RME UFX. Man, that's good. So I ordered a bunch of parts from Mouser. Um, just a bunch of capacitors. And I'll put the entire build of materials in the description. So you guys can just grab them if you want to try to repair your UFX or 800 or whatever um, RME interface you have. Since because apparently there's a bunch of different interfaces that all use the same power supply. So all these parts should be interchangeable. But basically it's just six different capacitors. Those are those little black things that apparently dry out with a lot of heat. So we're gonna just swap them all out and see what happens. But from all the research I've done, it seems like you should only do one at a time and then make sure that everything's good because these do have a polarity on it. So we have to make sure that we put them in correctly. So let's try to get started. So from what I can tell is we have a few screws. We have three in the back here. There's um, some on the sides. I actually don't know if we need to take these off, but there's one here, there's another one here. And I think with that, we should be able to lift this top off. So let's get to work. This pretty much, I think this is a free screwdriver. It's too big. <laughs> All right, so I found a smaller one, I think. I don't know. I'm not allowed to wreck my wife's puzzle, so I have to be very careful. Definitely need to take these off. Now, what Army has done is put a little quality control sticker right here, so they know if you opened up your your UFX, because you gotta break that sticker in order to uh, open the top. So let's see if we can just peel it off so I can put it back over it later. Maybe they'll never know. I'll just plead the fifth. So be careful when you take it off because you gotta take this grounding cable off. Step one completed. Now you have a drink of beer. Ah. It looks really, really, really clean. So if I had to guess, this is the power supply. So I know it's hooked up by a, by a cable. So this ribbon cable. So we have to just disconnect this, both of these 
and then uh, we'll be able to take this power supply out and then we can work on it. Man, this these cables are really hard to get disconnected from this board. So you might need to use like a needle nose or a karate chop or something. So let's try that. <gasps> there we go, that, that worked out great. Okay, but real talk, what I used was uh, this flat blade screwdriver and I literally just propped it up here and then they have this little tab and I just popped it off that way. I literally felt like I was gonna break the board when I was doing this, but I just put my finger here and tried to lift it as I pried it and they popped up pretty easily. Um, but I could not do it by my own fingers. Time for another drink. So there are four more screws to take this board out. There's one here, one here, and then one here, and then another one back here. Now, I wanna point something out to you guys because I just discovered this. When capacitors go bad, they usually pop. So if you look at the tops of all these capacitors, this one looks like it's nice and flat. These all look flat, right? Look over here. Look at this one right here. That one's bulging. This is probably what the problem is, is that capacitor right there. But because this is over 10 years old, I'm just gonna change all the capacitors out um, at the same time because inevitably it's gonna go bad again. So uh, we're gonna go do that now. Let's get this board out. Do not lose those. Great success, we just gotta get this board off. There we go. Cheers. So now we're gonna get this board up in the air and we're going to heat the bottom of each capacitor. Use that little solder sucker bulb, this guy and it'll pull all the solder away from the capacitor and then we'll be able to pull each one out one by one and then replace them as we go. So let's go do that. All right, so first one up is gonna be this big daddy. So it's this lead and this. So let's get this heated up and then we're gonna suck all the solder off. So capacitors are very sensitive to heat, so you do not wanna overheat these if you can. So try to be quick when it comes to this stuff. So get it hot as fast as you can, suck the solder and be done. Okay, so here we go. There it is. See that? Beautiful. Okay, let's do the one below it. There it is, that should work. All right, so let's see what we got. Let's see if we can just get this thing off. I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth. It should be good. Ooh, 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 that one flying. I wanna point out one thing. So because there is a plus and minus on these capacitors, right? So there's this stripe with this minus sign and then there's nothing on the other. So this stripe side is gonna go on the board where there is this little dot, okay? So when you go to re-put the new capacitors on, it's gonna mount like that. So here's what I wanna show you is uh, the one that I got to replace it is actually bigger. And by bigger, I mean taller, not, not actually like the diameter is, I think maybe a millimeter bigger, but it should still fit on this board just fine. Okay, these are just snap in. Yep, perfect, look at that. So here are the two legs sticking out, so let's solder it. I'm gonna have to go really fast because this is really hot. Okay, done. Let's get this one. Okay, and then this was completely filled in when I pulled it off, so we'll just finish that. That one is in. On to the next one. Okay, so the next one we're gonna go for is this little guy. And I changed the angle, so hopefully it's better for you guys. Um, I do want to point out a few things in addition to that, and that is that there's these little black cylinders. These are not capacitors. These are what RME calls coils. Uh, so leave those alone. Those do not need to be changed, okay? Just the capacitors. And honestly, it's probably just this one guy because he's bulging out. Uh, but let's go and let's get this one out of there. Sometimes the hardest part is just figuring out where the actual leads are. I think it's this guy. 
nailed it. Look at that, it just fell right out like a boss. Okay, so pop quiz, which way does the capacitor go in? If you answered that that dot goes with the negative side of the capacitor, then you are correct. So again, there's our negative side, it's a shorter lead. Put that in. Get it all the way down there, nice and flush with the board, looking good. Another thing you can do is you can kind of bend the leads out a little bit to hold it in place. Done. Now you just need to clip these two leads nice and flush with the board. All right, so admission time. I don't have anything to cut the leads except for this. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, so let's see if it works. <laughs> Dude, I hope, I hope this works. God, my wife's gonna kill me if she finds out. Oh, yes. There you go. If you are in a bind, good old fingernail clippers works great. Let's take out little guy right here, C7. Cool. There it is, fell right out again. So again, which side does the negative lead go to? The one with the dot, so let's do it. Short is negative, so put the short side to that dot. Push it all the way down. And while it's down, we'll, we can just bend these leads a little bit to help hold it in place. So that's, that's too much solder. I really should take some of it off. It's better to leave it like that than to keep reheating it because it's a small little capacitor. That, oh, oopsie. Well, time for a drink. This video is taking too long, so I'm just gonna get all these out really fast. I got real videos to make. So again, here's the fun part about electronics. So this is the part that came out doesn't look exactly the same as the one I had to buy because they didn't have this exact part. But as long as you get the same uh, capacitance and same minimum voltage requirement and then heat and a few other things, you can get any size that you want. So the important part is to make sure this diameter isn't larger than this one. Okay, you can have it shorter or taller, it doesn't really matter. Um, the maximum height for this board is like two and a half centimeters, so you're good luck finding a capacitor that, that's that tall. So, um, just wanted to inspire some of you. Short negative lead goes towards the dot. Don't ever forget. Never forget. Anybody else say really weird things to themselves when they're alone working on electronics? Don't tell my wife I'm using her nail clipper. Look at that cute little guy right there, yes. Oh man, see, I thought I had, I thought I decided the wrong thing. So this is just like a, a glue, basically. Top with vibration, I think. Probably not that important to put it back on. Uh, if you have hot glue, you could maybe glue it back onto that thing, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Where does the negative lead go? You guessed it, by the dot. There we go, little minis, my new little minions. By the way, you should wear safety glasses because those things will fly in your eyeballs. All right, so we got those two done, that one, that one. Let's get these big ones here. Get out of here. Man, I'm not looking forward to cleaning up this room when I'm done with this. There we go. It's like a loose tooth almost. You just kind of wiggle it. Keep on wiggling it. There she is. Yeah, we have guests over and like, I'm in here recapping an army UFX. Don't breathe in that vapor. Let's see if that's enough to do the job. Time for more beer. All right, cool. And we're on the final two, baby. Woo -woo. So my dumb camera died, but I wanna teach you guys some good technique. So put your soldering iron on the spot where you want to desolder and wiggle it back and forth until the whole thing is liquid and then get it with the bulb. So you can see it clean the hole out 
almost completely. This is an exciting moment. We're on the last few. This thing better turn on, I'll be so sad. You wanna get the pad hot and the lead hot. A lot of times I see people just heating up the lead, which isn't great because we need to get a good solder to the PC board. There we go. Yeah, I'm definitely not cleaning up all that crap off the floor. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna get this back in the board and then we're gonna give it a shot, powered on, and fingers crossed this is gonna solve the problem. So much easier to push these in than to take them out. But there you have it. This whole thing has been recapped. Kind of makes me wish I would have changed these guys out because they look like crap. Time to get the last screw in. And then we need to cover up our tracks by putting the little security sticker back on so that no one will ever know. That looks like total garbage. <laughs> that, my friends, is uh, a recap. All the capacitors in the power supply have been changed. We got the top back on. Things are looking good. Now let's plug it in and see if it turns on. All right, I'm back in the studio. So we're gonna flip this thing around, plug it in, and I hope to God it turns on. <laughs> All right, we got power cable in. Like, I can't tell you how nervous I am. All right, if it turns on and the little green lights don't come on, we won. Please, please work. Yes! Look at that. No more bars. Oh, this is amazing. I showed this earlier, but here's the sound I recorded just recording any of the inputs from the RME. Let's see if I can hear audio again. Awesome. So that was the sound that it was making before. So let's record more audio and see if it makes that noise again. All gone. No more of that crazy machine gun crap. And those lights, no longer flickering. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. I've never done one of these before from a cell phone, but I had no option since my interface died. I'm so glad to find out that it was just one of those stupid capacitors and I'm not anybody special and I was able to fix mine. So if you have an RME interface, and it happens to share the same power supply as the UFX, then look in the description. I have a list of the capacitors I use to fix this thing, and I'll completely link everything up for you. So all you have to do is go to Mouser, purchase all those capacitors, and if you have a soldering iron and one of those little solder bulbs, you should be good to go. This was not hard to do, and I hope it helps somebody out there because I was losing my mind without my interface. <laughs> So if you found this helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you happen to also make music, uh, I think you should subscribe because I have a lot of amazing music mixing and mastering tutorials. I help people from all over the world make better sounding music regardless if they have a small home studio in a bedroom or if they master mix music on a laptop. So with that, I'm gonna drink the rest of my beer and I wanna thank you again for your time and attention and I hope to see you in another video. Cheers.